Brad Kemp here, Senior Instructional Designer at Schoology. Um, pretty super excited to have you here today, William. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself? Gladly. I am William Millingworth from Lancaster Bible College. I am an instructional technologist and a digital learning systems administrator. Okay, so William, I hate to bring you down here, but you know what I'm really curious about talking uh, through today is actually not instruction. Okay. Not system administration. I know, right? You're taking them out in the left field, aren't you? Me too, because that's that's also my bread and butter. But this thing that keeps coming up is not the instruction stuff. It's not the stuff that happens in the classroom or in the digital classroom universe. Mm -hmm. But it's just that communication piece. That mm -hmm. you know, back in the day, we had a lot of conversations in hallways and you know around the lockers uh, in the gymnasium. Mm -hmm. That third place that you right. know the other place where all that stuff happens uh, and turns out there's a lot of learning that happens there things that you might not even describe as the informal learning right the informal the in, space. all the informal spaces so uh, it seems like at Lancaster Bible College there are some pretty interesting things happening in that space and some ideas on where that space is today because Especially with younger learners. Okay, so I'm an old guy. <laughs> younger learners, meaning uh, you know, all you folks in your twenties, um, you're already learning in these other places, but your informal spaces aren't the ones necessarily that I had or that right. the right. professors had you know, ten right. years. You might have been by the locker, but my people are in like a Twitter chat or something. Yeah. Like that, yeah. So right? where Is that the idea exactly? So yeah. where are your people? Sure. Um, where are they in Schoology, outside of Schoology? Yeah. What are their other places? And yeah. Well, and I liked what you said about a third space, and I think that that's being replaced with the third screen, right? We talk about the ideas of screens, what are our levels of screens in the world, and right now the third screen is the mobile platform, um, and there's a lot of information that's being exchanged that way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what are the venues for that? I think Twitter is a, is a common place for conversation. Mm -hmm. But I've actually found, like, maybe it's just who I follow. Maybe it's because I follow you. Um, but I don't find as many young people on Twitter. So I don't know if they're if they're leaving that for another venue. Or, you know, it, it is. Right. Twitter is who you follow. So it just right. might be my context. Okay. Um, but, you know, we have some groups in Schoology that just started for them. Right? Mm -hmm. We have, um, an, an, we call it ACE, and I forget what it stands for, but it's activities at, mm -hmm. at, at LBC. And so, you know, we have some staff members and faculty members who are part of leading that, but then all the students are in there. Okay. And they run with keeping up events and things like that on campus. And it's just a, a first touch point for community life at our school. So there are curated spaces that you're putting together in the Twitterverse, the Instagram, you know, universes. Uh, those are pretty self-organized. Mm. Uh, where, how do you see the value of a actually curated space at an academic institution and? How is that different? How do you have to manage that differently? Sure. I, I think that one of the good things about informal spaces is that it can be organic, it can develop, you know, there's no bylaws involved. That's cool. Sure. Um, and you, like you said, at the locker space, there's things that they're still learning in that environment, how to relate to one another. But right. when it's that curated experience, specifically even in Lancaster Bible College's context, it, we can help them engage some element of our vision or our mission that you may not come together in an informal space, right? In the informal right. space, they lead it, and, and that's healthy. But there's times where that curation needs to be there just to make sure that an element of what they're doing is on, on task, on mission, mm -hmm. even if it's informal, right? ACE, for instance, it's informal events. It's volleyball okay. games, pop-up, frisbee, stuff like that. Um, but it's still with a mission to say it's in context of what LBC is trying to accomplish. Right. So there, you're curating things that are already somewhat self-organizing, but actually m maybe surfacing the awareness of that informal activity. Because right. especially for, I would think for someone new to the campus, knowing where all that stuff is, that can be a little intimidating. Pop-up Frisbee games happen. They're not going to be stopped, right? But when Ace can put one together and maybe even get like some sort of, uh, you know, tournament going, that has that's, that is an actual example. There is now an Ultimate Frisbee team on campus that was just pop-up <laughs> games before. So. That's amazing. Now, that's, that's recreational, it's activity, but that is happening. Uh, we have a faculty group. Uh, mm -hmm. That this faculty faculty group is designed to improve communications and lecture across the faculty and and Im improve scholarly research. Mm -hmm. Well, the students got aware of this and decided to make their own. Oh, and nice. so it's a student based 
scholarly activity where they get together inside there's a school group for it and it, it kind of parallels the faculty group and there's mm-hmm. the faculty member who leads the one is a part of the student one and, and it's really cool they just said oh wait the faculty can do that why can't we yeah and yeah. they did it so they yeah. get together and they discuss lectures and theologians and historians and all sorts of kind of stuff so d- drill into that a little deeper because th- um it seems like within curation there's this idea of there's still this independent student voice. Mm. So how is that independent student voice thriving or being nurtured within something that's curated? I mean, it sounds like in that situation they just, you know, uh, took the lasso and said, you know, this is ours too. Right, Uh, right. Talk to me more about that. So so I I gotta say, I think there's a component of group think that becomes a part of this. Like, Mm. it didn't take just one student. Right. It took one student maybe to notice, but they kind of pulled together and said, OK, the faculty are doing it this way. I want to, too. And and okay. what that's resulted in is is this idea that I've been looking into and a professor of mine has been working on with this idea of sociometacognition. These students are beginning to think um, in their own way. Sociometacognition. Uh, <laughs> you heard it here first. These, these, these students are starting to think about their thinking, right? They're trying to consider whether they sure. want to go forward, but then mm-hmm. they're not even just doing it alone. It's not a vacuum. Thought processes, learning is not vacuous. It's, mm-hmm. it's got to be something that is happening in context, formal or informal. And so this informal example, at least, is just helping that along. So there, um, with that, I do think that the idea of reflection. So if we, you know, if we want to consolidate some of these ideas, uh, the idea of reflection, of student reflection, um, and uh, self, you know, self awareness, you often. I don't know if this is intentional, but sometimes people think about that in the singular. Hmm. Um, the, the student is having that reflection. Sure. But it sounds like you're making a pretty clear argument that that reflection can thrive and be more powerful in groups. In groups and continuously. There's there's an element of continuity that, that is not an event. To. It's, right. a, it's a reflection is a process. Yeah, we even yeah. say in in profession, right? You want to be a reflective professor. You want to be mm-hmm. a reflective whatever you are, and that shouldn't just happen once, or right. it shouldn't be a paper. Yeah. It's a component of how we are as yeah. learners, how we are as thinkers. Right. A growth mindset isn't mm-hmm. you know, check done. Yeah. Lifelong that learners. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you were to kind of consolidate these ideas into some tips for, okay, let's say that, uh, you know, we meet someone, someone, you know, with a title, instructional administration, da, 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 da. not that I know anyone like that. Um, but if you were to know someone like that uh, and start talking, talking social, well, I don't think many people have thought about their LMS being a social mechanism. Mm-hmm. What are some some mm. tips? If you had like three tips, like well, try this. No matter what the LMS, no matter what what, what the uh, situation, what would you advise? Sure. sure. Agnostic of LMS, I, I really do like to push people to Twitter. I, I was a mm-hmm. I was an abstainer for a long time. I mm-hmm. was considered I thought myself an elitist. I was like, what can you do with 140 or 120 yeah, characters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nothing, you I, know. I fish posh, yeah. fish posh. But um, you know, I've kind of consumed, been consumed by it, and I find sure. it, it's a it's a great venue for producing and consuming content, mm-hmm. and it does come back to who you follow. Mm-hmm. And so, if you can encourage your students and model for them good practice of following people, there you go. You you've got communication, you've got mm-hmm. teaching, you've got modeling, you've got learning. It's all wrapped up in one tool. Mm-hmm. If you're just going aside from a tool, just offer the conversation to continue. Don't don't let conversations end. Like That's that. actually something that I've experienced in some of my grad studies. I still connect connect with my grad professors after the classes. Right. And and it just continues. So step one, maybe mm-hmm. get yourself a Twitter handle. Step two, sure. invite the conversation to continue. Right, and whatever tool you're using, whatever whether, tool. if that's a Schoology group, if it's a simple discussion board, if yep. it's a ongoing Google Doc, if updates. It's, just yeah, updates yeah. alone. Let the students update, update yeah. back to them, comment if, on if it. If it's it's simply knowing your professor's Twitter handle if they have yep. one. Yep. Right? Exactly. Okay. Okay, so long conversation to continue. Uh, one more. All right. Oh. <laughs> you had to go in three. I mean, I guess this is this everything is happens one. in threes. Everything happens in threes. Well, get your Twitter, get your updates or your communication, invite them in. Um, and just try and see if there's a way that you can 
facilitate better groups or, or the opportunity for groups at your mm -hmm. institution. So we have a policy at LBC. Um, we wanted to be careful about who could create. You right. open up the reins and you're going to add every single group you could think of. Yeah, and then you don't want this, you know, huge bucket of dead groups that you're kind of well, sifting through. Well, dead groups, that's my concern as a system admin. But, okay. I mean, if you got this, this garage band of puppet musicians together, that just could be a little <laughs> weird uh, in a group. So we just want to watch out for these things. But we, we just instituted True. a policy. It's simple. If you want a group, find a professor to sponsor it. And it connects them now with any faculty member they want to. Mm -hmm. this, it's literally just the fact that the, he needs to create the group and be aware, he or she needs to be aware of facilitating it. They don't have to run it. The students can run the group. But that kind of policy drives our students together to our faculty, mm -hmm. gets those connections happening in new organic ways. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they can do whatever they want with the group. Great, right? Very cool. Lots of opportunities there. Well, you heard it here first, the idea of an academically, socially connected learning environment from my friend Will. Oh, thank Will, you, Brad. Great to have you at headquarters. Hope to see you again soon. Been a pleasure. Thanks. All right.